There's only one topic that we're going to cover in Chapter 4, and that is the classified balance sheet. So you're not going to have to read most of this chapter. So in our text, the information on the classified balance sheet starts on page 168, and it ends on 173. So you just need to read pages 168 through 173. What I'm going to be showing you are pieces of the classified balance sheet and then explaining to you the various parts. So in this slide we have the assets. So up to this point we have just listed the assets in order of liquidity and totaled them up. This time we're breaking the assets down into categories. The first category is current assets. Those are the assets that are assumed to be convertible to cash within one year or less. Next classification, which we haven't seen before, is long-term investments. So long-term investments include an organization's investment in securities like stocks and bonds or in real estate. So the whole point is, is that there are holding these investments for an indefinite, indefinite period of time with the idea that they're going to appreciate in value and in the future they can convert those to cash. We then have property, plant, and equipment, our fixed assets. In this illustration, there are only two fixed assets here. There's land and there's equipment. Land, and we'll discuss this later on again, land is not depreciable. And the reason it is not depreciable, it is considered to have an infinite life, which means that it can be used over and over and over again for different purposes. Of course, ignoring the effects of such things as uh, erosion, as we know about too well uh, in the coastal areas of Long Island. Equipment is a depreciable asset. And right under any depreciable asset should come the balance in the corresponding accumulated depreciation account. So in this case we have $5,000 with the cost of the equipment of $24,000. What was done here is that the accumulated depreciation balance was subtracted from the cost of the equipment and that gave us the book value of $19,000 which is added in in calculating total property plant and equipment. As time goes by and the asset is depreciated more, what will happen is the balance and accumulated depreciation will go up and the book value will go down. Intangible assets, and I'll just mention this briefly, are assets that have no physical characteristics but do have value and that is something that we are going to look at in Chapter 9. All right, now in this slide, we have the liabilities and stockholders' equity section of the balance sheet. And under current liabilities, you'll see a notes payable. And under long-term liabilities, you see a notes payable. The notes payable under current liabilities must be satisfied within one year or less. And normally, in a, in, under current liabilities, accounts payable are listed first, but since we have the short-term note, that takes priority. So we have notes payable, accounts payable, and then there's flexibility in terms of listing the other liabilities. But these liabilities are obligations that must be satisfied within one year or less. Now we have long-term liabilities, mortgages payable, notes payable. In that case, you have more than one year to repay that debt. So a mortgage payable, that could, uh, you may be paying your mortgage over 20 years or 30 years. Notes payable, car loans, uh, student loans, those, uh, the car loans you may pay five, six years. Uh, student loans, I've heard students tell me that they're paying those over a period as long as 30 years. So once we've come up with the total current liabilities, and the total long-term liabilities, we add the two together to come up with total liabilities. 
Stockholders equity section of the balance sheet does not look any different from what we have done to date. However, as we move along in the course, we are going to become more sophisticated as we add more accounts to stockholders equity. I'm going to go back to the previous slide which listed the assets because there's something I need to mention to you there. Alright, first of all, and I probably mentioned this when I initially introduced balance sheets back in Chapter 1, is that assets have to be listed in the order of liquidity. And what we mean by liquidity is the ease with which an asset can be converted to cash. So obviously cash always has to be listed first. Now, we haven't seen this before. Right in the cash, we have an account called debt investments. It could also be called marketable securities. Those are investments are very short-term investments where companies will put extra cash to get a higher rate of return than they would if they just put the cash in the bank. Okay. All right. Now, Current assets, this uh, slide is an iteration, a reiteration of what I had said, particularly bullet one. What I did not mention was the operating cycle. So the operating cycle is the average time it takes to purchase inventory, sell it on account, and then collect the cash from customers. And of course, what a business would want to do is to have that operating cycle be as short as as possible because we want to maximize their cash flow. At the same time, the customers want to maximize their cash flow and they want to be able to pay the bill as late as possible. And here's just another illustration of the current assets section of the balance sheet. Long-term investments, I had mentioned investments in securities which would be the stocks and bonds investments in plant assets like land and buildings, and then also long-term notes receivable. In terms of long-term notes receivable, what that represents is a loan that a business made to another business or to individual customers, and they are giving the borrower longer than one year to repay. But eventually that needs to convert to cash. All right, so now we go to property, plants, and equipment. We've said that the assets, they're long-lived assets. They represent a major commitment of funds. We've talked about depreciation as the allocation of the cost of the assets over the estimated useful life. And we also discussed that accumulated depreciation is a contra-asset account and that as time goes on and we continue to depreciate the asset, the balance and accumulated depreciation will increase and the book value will decrease. And here's an illustration of additional types of fixed assets. And I'm not going to spend time on that now because we will do that later on the semester. We also have a listing of intangible assets, and that will be covered later on this semester. All right, current liabilities. As we said, there are obligations that have to be paid within the year. I had mentioned that usually short-term notes payable are listed first, and then there are other examples of accounts or current liabilities that are listed for you. If you see the word payable, that tells you that it's a liability because money is owed. And here we have a, uh, n another illustration, the current liability section of the balance sheet. Under long-term liabilities, we have long-term debt, we have deferred income taxes, which is something we're not going to get into in this class, and other non-current liabilities. All right, and finally, stockholders equity. We are focusing on corporate accounting, so in stockholders' equity, we're going to have paid in capital and retained earnings. So for our purposes right now, common stock is our only paid in capital account. If we were doing accounting for a sole proprietorship, we would have one capital account. For a partnership, there would be a capital account for each partner. So that ends our lecture in 
chapter 4 and of course I will be assigning problems to you where you will prepare the classified balance sheet.